So for the first one is to process the DNA sequence. So for this one, it's more on the practical, right? Okay. But before you do the practical, I just introduce uh, you a few uh, things that is quite new for you. So you have to know the data format, the format that the, the file, the result store. Okay. The, of course, the, all the results store in a single file. But what's the format look like? Mm -hmm. So if you double click, it's a software. How it look like? Okay. So the software you're going to use is a BioEdit. Okay, just download the software and install. And then after you have, you know the file, you know how to open it. The next thing is to know how to check it. Okay, verify it. Then after you verify it, you make the collection. Then after that, you get your final sequence, right? ATCG. Then after that, you have to deposit the sequence in the gym bag. Okay. So for this one, but there's a few exercises for you to just try. Okay. For you to understand a little bit more about this. So for the data format, actually it depends on the DNA sequencer, so the machine that we use to, to read the ATCG of your PCR product. Okay? And also depends on the software that you use to extract the raw data and analyze them, interpret the results. So this is a machine usually. So they produce some, something like this. Okay. So you, if you still remember, if you're using the die termina terminator single sequencing approach, you get this kind of result, right? Okay. Different page show different uh, nucleotide. So for example, what you sh what you see here, so this is a capillary, right? You see the line here, one, two, three, four, five. So there are sixteen capillary. So they mean at a, in a single run. They can analyze 16 of your PCR product. Okay? So you can, if you have 16, you can put it all together, they can analyze. And of course, in the capillary, there's a polymer, right? Like a gel, like a electrophoresis. So the one with the shorter fragment will move first. Okay? And then there's a laser, you're going to hit the die. And then there's camera, you're going to capture the signal. Okay? So this is exactly how it looks like in the, each of the capillary. So you can see this one is a. So this one is a first category, second. Uh, sorry, first capillary, second capillary, and so on and so forth. Then you see the color, right? Okay. Then this is how it look like in the in the in the in the image. Then after that, the software will interpret this color and turn it into the peak. Okay. Then after that, for different peak color, represent different nucleotide. Okay, where the uh, the extension stop. All right. So this is how it look like. Of course, if you use slightly different machine, the output will be slightly different. The file format will be slightly different. Okay. <clears throat> so what you have here, you have the electronic gel file, which is the primary data. So this is your primary data. Okay. This is exactly what you see in the capillary. You cannot see it, but somehow they capture it for you. Then after that you have the you have the chromatogram. Okay, so this is a electronic gel data. So the the name is electronic because now it's an image, eh? Okay. So this is something like this. So they were going to turn this into the chromatogram. So this is what we call the chromatogram. And then you also have a Based on the chromatogram, they can read the nucleotide and they give you the nucleotide sequence file. <coughs> this one. If you double click this file with the proper software, they will give you this one, the blue color. They will give you this one and this one. You can see you have, there are many peaks, right? So maybe some of the peaks is so close to each other. The software might interpret that actually there's a 2T. Somewhere is so close, then interpret as a one T, for example. Okay? So you need to check it, and you need to make a collection in the nucleotide file. So this is an ABI file. So this is a raw data output from the sequencer. <clears throat> so after you make a collection, you're going to set it as a FASTA file. Okay? Dot FSA. Okay? The sequence that you download from Jinben is the FASTA file. So that means that you don't see the chromatogram anymore, the peak, but somehow they just show you the sequence, A, T, C, G. 
at the S bar, okay? So this is a simple format. Okay. So you can use a software by edit. There are many software you can use, but for this course, you use this one, right? By edit. Okay. Just download this software, it's free. Okay. If you double click the ABI file, they will show you the commandogram and also the FASTA file at the same time. Okay. Then after that, you need to check the commandogram with your FASTA file and make a correction necessary for your FASTA file. Then save the FASTA file. Okay. Then after that, you're going to work with the FASTA file only. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So that, for example, this is a FASTA file. This one. This one. Okay. After you double click, you will see this, the sequence, right? Okay. And this is the name of the file. So this is a very simple format. If you don't have the software to open the FASTA file, you can just open it with Notepad. The only thing is, if you open it in Notepad, you only can see this, something like this. It's not the file name here. If you're using software, it will show the name is here, right? Okay. So this is the name of the sequence. So in each FASTA file, you can have many sequence. For example, this is uh, the name of the FASTA file is SEQ sequence, right? You see the name of the FASTA file here is SEQ. Uh, somehow the name of the sequence in this FASTA file is O3 Milabel, for example. Okay? And they can have many sequence in the same file. So how to copy paste and manipulate the file? Okay, just watch a V video. The video will explain it. most of the things you can do with the PyoD software, just to explore the sequence. So this is about the format. Okay? So there will be what the data the format they will get, the file type they will get from the sequencer is ABI file. If you double click with the software, for example, PyoD, you will see two of uh, interface, okay? One is the uh, chromatogram, another one is the sequence, just one sequence, okay? After you edit it, then you can save the sequence as a FASTA file. Actually, for each PCI product, when you do the cycle sequencing, okay, remember you need to, if you're doing the single sequencing, you need to do the cycle sequencing, right? To make a lot of the new copy with the dye, correct? Okay, but the different it's very similar to the PCR, but somehow for the cycle sequence, you only put one primer. Okay, not a pair of the primer, just one primer. Because the template that you use, already a PCR product, right? So you just need to use one primer. Because the DNA is a double heat, uh, double strand DNA, so if you sequence from this direction, from left to right, okay, or to right to left is the same, okay? So usually, it's possible just to get the sequence. Okay. So this is one DNA sequence, right? But you have two strands. Okay. One is a forward strand, another one is a reverse strand. Okay. It's the same thing. If you use a primer, forward primer in your sequencing, in your cycle sequencing, okay. then you will get this, this strand. Okay. Theoretically speaking, you just you need to use one primer to get one sequence. But again. As I show you, the output is a chromatogram, right? So there might be some error. So for example, the chromatogram show you, it's not very clear, it seems 1p or sometimes 2p, you're not very sure, right? So there's no way you can double check. So that's the reason why for each PCI product, we will sequence in both directions. So one will put the forward primer, another one will put the reverse primer, okay? So that means that you will get both strands, okay? So there are, there should be the same sequence. So it will help you, then after you check, you check the forward primer, the forward strand, and also reverse strand, and then compare. They should be the same, okay? This is help you to double check. Because after this, you're not going to, you, you are going to use the sequence for further analysis, you're not going to check again. So you have to make sure the sequence is really accurate, okay? <clears throat> so for example, this is a sequence. So this is from the forward trend, uh, trend. this is a reverse trend, okay? So when you sequence, you sequence in this di direction, eh? okay? So the forward primer will attach to this trend, 
because they are just like a PCR, they extend from five to three, right? Five prime to three prime. So they will extend from here to here. Okay, they will extend A T A C A. Okay, maybe they stop here. Okay, whatever. But however, this is a sequence after they finish. Then for reverse trend, they will sequence from here to here. Okay, it's negative charge. This trend, if you could put it in capillary, they will they will move in this direction, right? Okay. But for this one, this one will move first. Okay. Because the five will move first, right? So it's something like this, correct? Okay, so this is a chromatogram. Okay. Then you see the sequence. Then after that you can compare. So the best best way for you to understand this is that you need to do some exercise. Okay? Just go to one of the video. I forgot I forgot to attach a file later, I will put the example file, then you can try to do this. Follow the instruction in the video, then you will start to understand. Okay? Just take your own time to understand. The most important thing is to understand this. Okay?